Welcome to Race Corp. My name is Aldrin Simpier and this is Engine Pitch and Polish. It's a battle of business ideas and we'll have to wait and see who will walk away with that ultimate cash prize of 650,000 Rand. This is Engine Pitch and Polish 2023. <laughs> And welcome everyone to the 2023 Engine Pitch and Polish. You are part of a lucky few. 16 contestants will be battling it out for that 650,000 Rand in cash. And of course, there is that bursary with 350,000 Rand. And all of this made possible by our sponsors, Engine Petroleum, NetBank, as well as Racecorp. And once again, I'd like to thank everyone for entering this competition. It is a big deal. It is about South Africa's economy. It is also about changing lives. And through your innovative ideas and your business solutions, South Africa can become a better country. Let's come and meet your guides. Hello again, loyal engine, pitch and polish fans. I can't tell you how excited I am to be part of South Africa's most loved and thrilling pitching competition where the stakes couldn't be any higher. That's right, once again, the winner of the 2023 engine, pitch and polish competition will walk away with a prize with 1 million Rand. That's 650,000 Rand in cash and a business growth program with 350,000 Rand from leading incubator Race Corp. South Africa's entrepreneurs play a hugely important role in creating jobs and contributing to the economy. They deserve to be nurtured, supported and celebrated and that is what this competition is all about. Our long-term and loyal sponsors are again demonstrating their unwavering support of South African entrepreneurship this year. Please join me in giving a big shout out to our title sponsor, Engine Petroleum, and our gold sponsor, NetBank. There's an African proverb that says, the best way to predict the future is to create it. This proverb captures Engine's commitment to be considered a progressive energy and solution partner and reaching lives for a sustainable future. I am Sipogazi Wabaza, Head of Enterprise risk and assurance at Engine, and I am excited to be a judge in this year's Engine Pitch and Polish. At Engine, we are keenly aware that socio-economic transformation is everyone's business. We owe it to ourselves, our customers, our communities, and our country to make every effort to drive positive change and enrich lives. Small and medium enterprises represent more than 98% of businesses across South Africa. They employ approximately 60% of the country's workforce. It is clear that South Africa's economic future depends heavily on the quality of its entrepreneurs. This is why Engine is proud to support South Africa's small businesses as the title sponsor of Engine Pitch and Polish for the 10th consecutive year. Engine Pitch and Polish aims to nurture South African entrepreneurs by instilling a strong entrepreneurial mindset in them something that is critical to the success in a rapidly changing world. Entrepreneurs who convert ideas into successful, profitable businesses provide employment to increasing numbers of people who in turn can provide for their own families who will thus have access to more and better opportunities. As Engine, we are honored to watch the contestants grow and develop during the course of Engine Pitch and Polish and we wish the 2023 contestants the best of luck and look forward to seeing them change the world. Hello everyone, and it's once again great to be chatting to you. Um, I am pretty sure that it's going to be another exciting year for the engine pitch and polish. And certainly from us here at NetBank, we are once again immensely proud to be involved in this wonderful initiative. This is NetBank's ninth year involved in the pitch and polish process over the years. 
Pigeon Polish has exposed us and the public to just the wonderful small businesses and entrepreneurs that exist out there. And there's no doubt that we will do exactly the same in 2023. Small business is of course a, a significant economical and societal priority uh, for South Africa and is a necessity for our future employment and the tax base of the country. Small business is solving for many community needs and innovation out there. In case you weren't aware, organizations like Amazon and Google were started off as fledgling small businesses operated from garages. Our future will largely be dictated by the health of entrepreneurship and the growth of the small business sector in South Africa. And of course, as NetBank, that's strategically important for us and why we're in such strong support of NGN Pitch and Polish. Banking and Beyond has been part of our small business services strategy within NetBank for some years. And so apart from our core activities of providing funding, transactional banking services, and a place for one to place their investments, the Beyond side of things is really about how do we go about doing more to solve for the day-to-day -day challenges small businesses are faced with. And so it's again with the, our Beyond initiative thinking in mind that we're so proud to be associated with NGN Pitch and Polish once again in 2023. Enjoy watching, enjoy learning. Learning is in fact one of the primary objectives around the engine pitch and polish. So this is designed not only to benefit those entrepreneurs that enter and become the ultimate winner, um, but I think there's so much that we can learn as entrepreneurs and small businesses by following this process as it plays out during the course of the year. Thank you, Engine and NetBank. I also like to express our gratitude to the Redis and Blue Houtrain, this year's official accommodation sponsor, which is putting up our out-of-town contestants in some serious style. Last but definitely not least, thank you to the Business Exchange, our venue sponsor, which is once again hosting our learning and mentoring sessions in their stunning workspaces. Now, our long-term fans will know that Engine Pitch and Polish is the brainchild of Race Corp, which runs the program. So I caught up with my longtime friend, Alon Reis, the CEO and founder of Race Corp. Engine Pitch and Polish is back once again. How do you feel about Engine Pitch and Polish 2023? Yeah, I've looked at uh, all the contestants and, you know, every year there is a, a different theme. So in 2020, when we went uh, digital 2021, we went digital. The theme was health. Yeah. It was the, the yogurts and the health juices and things like that. It's it all about the healthy living. Healthy, which came obviously from COVID. And then we moved to last year. And last year it was very much a green thematic. But this year, if you're trying to look at the contestants and who's in this year, I think the theme for me is very much a David versus Goliath. There's a lot of um, smaller guys who are trying to enter into yeah. established markets and take on the incumbents. So the courage is great and the courage is commendable. However, though, strategy very important. A strategy is everything. You know, when, when you take on a, a Goliath, you cannot underestimate the, their strength. So you have to know where to hide and where to, and how to enter a market when there is a big dominant player. And so I'm very interested to see how they think about that during their pitches. Yeah, and scalability? Yeah, so obviously we're looking uh, to see whether those businesses can scale. And actually that's a very important thing because for us, what we're wanting with Indian Pitch and Polish is to ensure that we are building businesses that are growing and employing in this country. So scale is everything. And along sometimes we have this whole debate about whether an entrepreneur is born or whether you can teach somebody to be an entrepreneur. But what do you look for in those pitches? So what I'm looking for in the pitches is the effect that the entrepreneurs can learn because successful entrepreneurs learn. And so this is pitch and polish. So we're looking for the polish piece. We're going to give a lot of feedback as a judging panel. And if they are not taking in that feedback and then applying that in their next pitch, they're out of here. Well, before we jump into the pitches, let's take a look at what's been happening behind the scenes. Things kicked off at Race Corp's base camp in St. Johannesburg, where our 16 entrepreneur contestants were welcomed by the Engine Pitch and Polish team. Using a highly complicated, double-blind, triple-whammy, random draw process that I couldn't quite wrap my head around, the 16 contestants were divided into four groups of four and also allocated their Race Corp mentors and business guides. Now, if you're an Engine Pitch and Polish first-timer, welcome and let me explain how the groups and rounds work. 
In round one, the four contestants in each of the four groups pitch against one another with two going through to round two. In round two, the two remaining contestants from each group go head to head to determine who will make it through to the semi-final round. At the end of the semi-final, we'll be left with two finalists, but that's not the end of it because this is where we get thrown a curveball, namely a wildcard contestant who comes out of nowhere and could literally snatch away the first prize in the final round. It hasn't happened yet, but you never know. Wait, there's something in it for you too, our viewer competition. This year, thanks to the incredible generosity of our gold sponsor, NetBank, we'll be giving away an Evo Super Shop voucher to the value of 5,000 Rand to one of you in every single episode. The Evo Super Shop offers you the variety of a shopping mall with the convenience of a mobile app. You can super shop from all your favorite retailers and have everything delivered straight to your door. What's not to love about that? If you'd like a chance of snagging tonight's prize, I'd advise you to pay close attention to both the pitches you'll be hearing as well as what the three judges have to say. And speaking about the judges, this is probably a good time to introduce them. Representing Engine Petroleum, we have Sipogazi Vabaza, the head of Enterprise Risk and Assurance. From NetBank, let's welcome back Monique China, the Senior Manager of Client Offerings for Small Businesses. And rounding out the panel is Ray's Corp CEO, Alon Reyes. And finally, the reason that we are all here, the pitches. The Red Group is starting us off and first up, all the way from Cape Town is Daniel Fanzale, the owner of Earthly Toothpaste. Daniel, good luck and put a smile on it. Hi, Daniel. Hi, thanks. Thanks for having me. How are you feeling? A bit nervous, but I'm confident in uh, my pitch and in my product. I see you've got some product there. Do you want to share that with us? Yeah, if you don't mind, I'd like to hand them out. Yeah, please do. Here you are, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. There you are. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. Great, Daniel. Do you understand that you've got 90 seconds to pitch? Yes, I do. Okay. Daniel. Five, four, three, two, one. Pitch and polish. You see this? This is the past. Welcome to the future. The toothpaste market has been stagnant in terms of innovation and change for way too long. Earthy toothpaste is essentially toothpaste without water. To use, pop a tablet into your mouth, bite and brush. That's it. The South African toothpaste market is worth 3 billion rand. The global toothpaste market is worth 13.6 billion dollars. The toothpaste, the toothpaste tablets, tablet market has, has obtained 1% of the market share within five years. In the past 12 months, our product has grown in sales by 81% um, month on month. Our largest retailer is currently Checkers, approved listings in Clicks as well as Tiskem, and we have a large. <laughs> I'm sorry, we have a large um, licensing agreement in East Africa. Our product is 6.7% less expensive than conventional toothpaste, and our average gross profit is 29.5%. But as a fast moving consumer good, that means our, our customers buy a product monthly. We have a state of the art factory and all, all R&D happens in house, which means um, we have matched edge of our competitors. Welcome to the future of oral hygiene. All right, even with those uh, little bumps, <laughs> uh, you made it on time. Oh, just, just. Okay, let's start with you, Sipakasi. Um, Thank you, Daniel. Uh, lovely pitch. Um, very interesting product as well. Um, how long is the product being out? So I started with the product in June of 2019, and I went to the market first time in October 2019. Uh, but the real pivot came into mass retail um, in April of 2022. What are your um, plans in terms of growing your product? I mean, I know you mentioned uh, extending b beyond the South African market. Can you tell us more about that? So I, want, I would like to expand into the aviation and hotel industry specifically. 
um, and we require a unique um, packaging solution for that. So I think that's a great fit for our product and new packaging, um, which is not in the glass, I think would be a perfect fit for those industries and is also large industries to go after. Excellent, thank you. Malik? Great, I'm glad that you mentioned the packaging piece because I see that you talk about your tubes at avoiding landfill, so going the whole sustainability route, um, but then it's in blister packs and it's in bottles. So, so from a packaging perspective, how are you navigating that with, with customers? So currently, um, we only have it in glass bottles. We have thought about putting it in blister packs, but we haven't decided on going that route. But for the hotel and aviation industry, we'd put it, put it into packets similar to we find sugar in small packets to have six or eight tablets in a packet. So not a lot of, not of, not, not a lot of tablets, and also to be able to break bulk, which conventional toothpaste can't do. Great. Um, just from our side, just in terms of sales, you spoke about, I think it was 88% growth on last year. Yes. But you could have done two rand last year. What, what, what is that number? Okay, so in South African retail, we started at about, um, our first month we did at about 4,000 units. We're currently doing about 400 units, sorry. We're currently doing about 3,000 units in the South African retail sector. Um, our largest market is actually the East African licensing deal we have, where we have a, a contract where we supply a minimum order quantity of 15,000 units per month to East Africa. But I know that is a big risk on our side. So we want to mitigate that by making sure the South African retail grows more quickly in order to mitigate the risk of them pulling out or if anything happens. Is it your own factory? Yes, it's our own factory and we run it ourselves. You've entered this competition. What are you going to do with the money? You never so, mentioned that. Okay, so what we're going to do, what we would, would like to do with the money is to spend it on firstly um, the unique packaging solutions we would have. About 50% of the money would go towards that. 30% uh, would go uh, towards um, compliance and certification. Um, that still needs to be done, the ones we haven't done yet. And then the remaining 20% would go to marketing, to market this product, get it out there. Because this is a very unique product. Yes, it is big in North America and Europe currently. Um, but South Africa, we are one of two companies that do it. And we actually manufacture for the other company in South Africa as well. So that's our... Okay. Our Thanks, Daniel. Piece. That's all we've got time for. You may leave. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So what did you think? Very interesting product. Um, it has some prospect, but I mean, I think you know, convincing a current buyer who buys normal toothpaste to start buying the tablet, I mean, I think for me listening to it and how I get annoyed with toothpaste, I think it's definitely a product that can be useful in the market. Um, I think he's got a great plan in terms of what he wants to do with it in the future, where he wants to put the product, uh, the market that he wants to serve, which is quite interesting. So, yeah, I think it was a very um, articulate uh, in terms of presenting his pitch this this morning. Yeah, also a very interesting um, concept. I think that uh, something that he needs to look out for is the packaging, because if, you, mm. if you're saying that you're sustainable, the packaging is obviously a big thing. And um, from, a, from a consumer perspective, obviously toothpaste is something that you use 24-7, um, you know, things like compliance makes me a bit nervous because you've got the whole fluoride story and that kind of thing. So, mm. so I think he just needs to see how he's going to actually navigate with, with customers around that. But, mm. but interesting concept. Yeah, yeah. What, what I was wanting to know is how unique it was, if you had competitors. Mm. Um, what about how does it taste relative to toothpaste? You know, yeah, I think if he's going to compete, he's, he's, also, he's got a whole bunch of other factors to compete on, which is... Um, the benefits of toothpaste. Mm -hmm. So this might not have the same benefits. You know, it might not get to those hard to get places. Mm. I don't know. But he, he didn't get that across. All right, let's score. Daniel, congratulations though, because you're the first contestant to go out there. How do you feel? Oh, I was a bit nervous. I stumbled a bit, but I think I gathered myself nicely. Um, and I think I answered the questions uh, quite well. So I'm overall happy, happy. Out of 10, how much would you give yourself? 
I would say at this stage a seven, so we can polish that's it a little bit and quite a, go good out your tip. <laughs> very confident there, hey? very confident. So you said that you have confidence in your product and confidence in your pitch as well, but the pitch didn't go as good as you expected it to go, so there was that snag there. But Yes, um, at the end of the day, um, this is a new environment for me. Um, it's not like I'm in front of the TV cameras every single day. Um, but as a new experience, I'll learn from this and next time I'll be better. Okay, so you started in 2019 yes. and now already in retail, in retail markets. Congratulations. How did you manage to do that? Oh, um, to be honest with you, it takes years and years of knocking on doors and continuously knocking on doors and once they don't open you, you go knock again. <laughs> so um, it's been a tough process, um, but we're getting there at the end of the day and I'm just very proud of my team okay. for, for helping me achieve it. And just quickly on the future, one of the questions was relating to sustainability and the packaging currently being in glass bottles. And your answer there, do you think that you're able to convince the judges that you're actually thinking about the environment? Oh, absolutely. This is what this product is um, all about. Sustainability, um, glass and aluminum caps is um, recyclable in perpetuity, which basically means you can use it over and over and over and over again. So ultimately, this is a much more um, viable, sustainable product and it contributes to the circular economy that we're going after. Let's see how you'll do. Thank you so much. All the best. Thanks so much. Well, listen, I'm just the host and not one of the judges, but I thought that there was a very strong first pitch to kick off this year's competition. Can our next contestant give him a run for his money? Meet Shuka Muhabir of Spru Technology, who's based right here in Gauteng. Let's head into the pitching arena to see how she does. Welcome, Shuka. Thank you. How are you feeling? Good. You ready? Yes, let's very do this. Ready. Yeah. Great, Shilka, five, four, three, two, one, pitch and polish. Hello there judges, I am Shilka and I am the co-founder of Spruit Technologies. I have six years experience in finance, marketing and startups. Spruit Technologies is a permaculture startup. We are hell bent on making farming more affordable, scalable and sustainable. Permaculture is a farming technique that optimizes the soil microbiology in order to produce consistently higher quality yields. My husband and I, during lockdown, were horrified when we saw food shelves empty, so we rushed back home, back up to our eight floor apartment and started growing food for ourselves. And that was how Spoot was born. The business has two sides to it. It has a consulting division where we are advising farms on how to implement the farming techniques into their current farming. That has turned, a, uh, turned over 140,000 in the last year. We also have a product side of the business that includes a range of products that complements our service business. I'm here today to talk to you about our rooting gel formulation that has been developed over the last two years. It stimulates root development in cuttings taken from mother plants. It helps our farmers preserve genetics, therefore increasing the quality of yield at a lower cost. It's a no-brainer for our farmers. I will be using the 650,000 in order to set up a manufacturing site. I will be training and developing a lab technician and a sales assistant, as well as buying raw materials. Shulke, you ran out of time there. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, Monique, questions from you? Tell me a little bit more about the product side. I see that you've got, you've got the rooting gel, but you've also got, is it solar panels or is it lights? So we do do indoor um, grow lights as well, but what I would be using the manufacturing side for is to rather manufacture more of the farming input. So you would be looking at your nutrients and fertilizers in order to help our farmers grow outside because I think that's more of a bigger impact right now. And who's your biggest competitor in terms of fertilizers? Uh, in terms of fertilizers, it would be uh, it would be any any imports from from the U.S. So we're looking at more U.S. competitors. Um, I don't have any names that come to mind. Uh, more focusing on the rooting gel currently. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Shulka. Uh, very interesting to hear about your pitch. Um, just in terms of, I mean, you mentioned that you, you manufacture your products, so you do your own manufacturing? So we do do our own manufacturing. We have our own equipment. We had a, a manufacturing site set up in Cape Town, but we're currently moving the business to Johannesburg, where we're working with a farm in Brackpan. 
We have developed the routing gel, we formulated uh, the routing gel. The turnover I mentioned in my pitch uh, is got to do with our consulting division. So that was where we've consulted on uh, um, our farms uh, in order to get them to implement these permaculture techniques. So what I would be using this funding for is to set up a permanent manufacturing plant in order to produce the rooting gel as well as our nutrients and the fertilizers. Sure, thank you so much. Well, I just need to understand what a rooting gel is. Yes, like sure. What do, you, do, you, do you pull out the plant, squeeze some gel, put it back in, what yes. do you do? Yes, so you take a cutting of a plant. Uh, it would have to be in a vegetative state, so before it flowers and fruits. You would take a, a slicing, a slice or a cutting of it, and then you would dip it in some of the rooting gel. So a liter of rooting gel can do 2,000 clones. And then you would put it in your uh, rooting medium, so either cocoa peat or a soil medium, and it would stimulate the root development. It, it, it takes, uh, it's a shorter amount of time to root than if we did seed propagation. What I'm not understanding there is, is this gel unique? Is it, you said yes. you've got competition, but is this your formulation? Do you have a patent over it? Do you have a recipe that no one else has? Uh, yes, so our competitors, so we do have a few competitors. They are also mainly importing from the US. Mm -hmm. In terms of our formulation, we have been working on specific formulations for different crops. Our competitors are, uh, what they're doing is about two or three different strengths. Whereas we're tailoring our rooting gel for specific plants, like a tomato plant in a specific climate. So we work very closely, I work very closely with our farmers in order to understand their climate conditions and how their plants are growing on their farm. And then I take that back to our manufacturing site in order to create these customized formulations. Okay, Shuk, that's all we got time for. Today, you may leave. Thank you so much. Oh, Monique, what, do we, what are your thoughts? I'm not convinced around the uniqueness of it because I knew you get like bone meal powder and that kind of stuff. So like, unless unless the gel is being created per per crop, as she's saying, so like tomatoes or potatoes, or maybe that is the unique piece. But um, yeah, but it, but wasn't, it very, wasn't very clear. Like, besides the rooting gel, like what else are you doing to actually? assist farmers and what is unique about about that and also how effective is it you know yeah because i know they talk about uh, it's supposed to improve yields how effective is it how how's it being received by the farmers yeah. on those different products and i wasn't sure also is it low scale farming i mean because if it's i mean what she described now for tomatoes if you've got a massive farm do you now go and do it per crop i, I didn't understand that i didn't come through really yeah, and what, what from, from our perspective also, she spoke about the, the revenue was 140, mm. but then this, we go back to our manufacturing plant, which could be just the kitchen. You know, I don't know what that is, uh, because she said there's, uh, it felt like there's no revenue coming from that, and this was being used for, for that. So it was a little bit messy. It wasn't clear. Uh, I'm doing this, and this is, I'll build this manufacturing plant, and this is what it's going to do. This is why it's unique. This is what the take-up is. And we're in the formulation stage, or whatever they're, they're at. So, it's, yeah, it felt a little so are, you, are you consulting on the rooting gel? Or is it on, on, on farming? Yeah. Not and, and the big thing for me, she, she never spoke about the authority to, to be there. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm a PhD in this, or I've got a master's in that, and therefore, I uh, have the authority to consult on these mm. things. Yeah. That didn't come across. I'm sure she is, yeah. or her and or, or her husband, but that didn't come across in the pitch. Okay, I'll share that with her. Let's score. Shaka, well done. But 90 seconds, clearly not enough. I know. Oh, man, I didn't even get to my financials. They didn't even ask me about it. But hey, I'm hoping that they were impressed. Anyway. Yeah. Do you think that you spend a lot of time speaking about the fertilizer instead of the rooting gel? Uh, yeah, I, I was surprised that it came up. I was really hoping to rather talk about the rooting gel because that's what I'd be using the prize money for. Um, but 
like, yeah, hey, they, yeah. they were interested in the fertilizers. It is to come. So, yeah, yeah maybe. And even the question around the competitors, because that came up a lot, even with the fertilizer, there was a question around yeah. the competitors. And then again, yeah. uh, with the rooting gel, um, you didn't mention who those competitors was. Maybe that's a strategic move from your end. Um, yeah. But would you be able to tell us more about what your competitors do and what you do differently from your competitors right now? Yeah, so um, my competitors are, I think one of the, the main differentiators is that rooting gel is not the only thing that we do. Our competitors are more mainly focused on the rooting gel and they are they're, they're doing more generalized rooting gel in terms of yep. strength. But for our, uh, for our formulation, we're looking at more specific crops um, and how to root them. And you feel confident though that you've been able to convince the judges to give you another shot at round two. I'm hoping. Remember that your guide was a winner the previous year. I know, so, it's so much so pressure. The pressure is on. The pressure is on for All sure. All the best. Thank you so much. Another strong pitch. Well done, Shruka. And that's just about a wrap of tonight's episode. The, what? Oh, the viewer competition. Just kidding. Just wanted to make sure that you're still paying attention. Like I said earlier on, tonight we are giving one lucky viewer an Evo voucher with 5,000 Rand courtesy of NetBank. If you'd like a chance to win, all you have to do is answer the question on your screen. What product is Shuka developing for farmers? What product is Shuka developing for farmers? To enter, send us a WhatsApp with your name and the right answer to 011-566-2000 before midnight tonight. All correct answers will go into a random draw and we'll be in touch with the winner before 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We'll also announce the winner on social media later this week. Well, it's been a bumper first episode. I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Make sure to meet me back here next week Tuesday at 7 o'clock to see the pictures of the last two Red Group contestants. But remember, we'll also be eliminating two contestants from this group. Who will it be? From me, Aldrin St. Pierre, I'll catch you on the pitch side.